Welcome back to Essentials Explained. My name is Luke, and today we're gonna to be talking about the indirect formula. This is a formula that will enable you easily to refer to named ranges in your Excel workbook and quickly automate the production of output tables needed to summarize your data. Let's jump into the content. So welcome back to our Excel. This is gonna be the last video covering some ifs and we're gonna talk about indirects. And so what's an indirect? Indirect is a formula in Excel that returns a reference specified by a text string. So what does that mean? Let's walk through a quick example. So if I copy this formula, I'll just paste it down here. If instead of maybe referencing this sum range directly, I wanted to maybe have it in a different cell and instead of writing it out, I just wanted to refer to that cell. Excel won't let me do that naturally because what it's gonna say is, it's gonna think C30 is my sum range. It doesn't have a, a good way to tell that I'm trying to refer to the value in another range as my address. The way it does that is with an indirect. And so if I write indirect and I close this parentheses, now this formula works and we can make sure, does it equal this up here? Yep, it does, great. So if I use my evaluate formula, alt MV, it will pull up and I can see indirect of C30, which is my working data E3 through E1218 will give me that sum range in my formula, which has been passed forward and all the rest of the formula will work. So you're probably asking, well, why would you go about that? That seems quite a bit clunkier than actually just writing it in the formula, which is fair. And the, the way I talk about it is in conjunction with named ranges, indirects are very, very powerful. So I'm gonna add a few helper rows down here, and those are gonna be for my range addresses I want to return. So I'm gonna call this the sum range, I'm gonna call this criteria range one, and then I'm gonna call this criteria range two. My sum range, what I want is I want revenue. For my criteria range one, I want the paint color. And just to be clear, you're gonna to need to use an underscore whenever you have a space in your column headers. That is just the way that Excel use named ranges. So if I go to my name manager, you can see each one of these margin dollars, margin percent, paint color, they have this underscore here. Make sure you're aware of where their underscores are going to need to replace spaces. And then my criteria range two will be my year. So if instead of writing this formula as named ranges within each of the specific sections, I can write sum ifs indirect of my sum range. And I'll just lock that in row 35. My criteria range run will be indirect of paint color. I'll lock that in the row. And then my criteria range, which is red paint, I'll lock that in the columns. My criteria range two will be an indirect of my year column which I'll lock in the rows, and then my criteria two, which is the year right above. And I'll lock that in the rows as well. Drag that over, it doesn't work. If I drag it down, it does. So it doesn't work because I don't have anything there. Um, let me just double check, make sure this is tying out. It is, that's great. And now if I drag over these references, maybe I'll make these just a different color so you can see these are inputs that we are using this 2021 column updated correctly this ltm column did not why is that it's because it is still looking up on the year column and so the ltm column so if i use ltm i copy that down now it ties so how is this formula working alt mv will pull up my evaluate formula and so the indirect of cell e35 which is the named range revenue gives me the range address of working data E3 through E1218. Indirect of paint color gives me this cell range, which looks up on red paint. Indirect of LTM gives me that cell range, which looks up on LTM and performs my sum F. So let's say I wanna do that for quantity as well. I'm just gonna copy over all of this and this doesn't work, but pretty easy. I just need to update this column to be quantity. I update that, I drag it over, and it all seems to be working. Our price, also, let me just make sure this check is working, and that seems to be working correctly. So that is how to use an indirect. 
You can also use it as we showed in the very first example to refer to specific range addresses. I've found the easiest way to do it is to use named ranges and using them in conjunction with an indirect will make it really easy to have these criteria fields, which you can use to easily query your data and look at different combinations of some ifs. So what we've done throughout this exercise is look at three different ways to arrive at the same answer, right? We've used direct range addresses, which work great. We've used named ranges within your formulas, which work. And then we've used an indirect on named ranges as well. All three of these are valid approaches to use to summarizing data in Excel. And I'm not going to tell you not to use any of them. I'm not going to tell you one is way better than others and will completely overhaul your Excel use and make you a pro in three days. What I'm going to tell you is know how to use all of these and understand the situation in which each one would be appropriate and would be. If you're interested in understanding how the countif formula is used, we'll be covering that in our next video linked here. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment any questions or feedback below.